frustrated customers of the country's major e-commerce platforms, Timon and Remake Price were seen storming the headquarters demanding their refunds. Select consumers have taken collective action for the first time, with concerns running high for liquidity of Q10 Group that owns the two platforms. We, of course, examine the latest on the crisis. And of course, a cash drop e-commerce platform was filed for court receivership. What do we make sense of in this situation? For further insights, we now join by regular commentator Professor Yang Jun Suk, economics professor at Catholic University of Korea. Good morning, Professor Young. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's get started. It seems some customers have succeeded in getting their refunds, while whether others have no other choice but to wait. Sellers associated with Timon and We Make Price are also facing significant financial losses. Uh, first, get our listeners caught up. Would you give us a rough projection of expected financial damage from the liquidity crisis? Okay, well, last Friday, reportedly, some customers had succeeded in getting refunds from Timon and Remap when they showed up at the corporate headquarters in person. Uh, and there's some reports that some customers have been even uh, repaid twice or three times, uh, but that's no longer the case. Uh, right now, uh, the credit card companies and so-called uh, payment gateways are taking uh, requests for refunds. Uh, I do not believe any of them have uh, started repaying yet, uh, but uh, because these uh, credit card companies and payment gates do have money, uh, they sh- uh, customers filing with them are expected to get their refund. Hmm. Now, the exact amount of total losses is not yet entirely clear. Reportedly, more than one, uh, 10,000 customers have filed for refunds and estimates of losses are piling up right now. It's in excess of 210 billion won or $152 million. Right now, the uh, total amount uh, being talked about is up to 1 trillion won, $723 million, uh, but the loss is still being calculated. Uh, now, Timon and VMAP, as you have said, have re- applied for uh, receivership and corporate rehabilitation. We have a uh, rehabilitation, mm-hmm. uh, acknowledging that they do not have enough funds to pay their obligations. That happened uh, relatively late afternoon yesterday. Uh, the major stockholder of Q10, the parent company of uh, WeMap and Timon, uh, Kuyongbe, has stated that last uh, Monday morning that he will put his own money uh, using his stocks as collateral to get funding to repay uh, the customers and sellers, uh, but that promise has uh, seems to be have been made in vain. Uh, Chairman Kuyongbe is thought to be in Korea, but no one is quite sure where. An order has been given for him to uh, stop from uh, possibly leaving the country by the courts. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the uh, problem that the uh, c- calculation of the losses are not yet made is that both customers and suppliers uh, face losses uh, since uh, Timon and WeMap are technically intermediaries. Companies use Timon and WeMap sites as a portal to advertise and sell their goods, so they're known as sellers. Timon and WeMap, uh, uh, because they run the site, uh, they sell the goods or services uh, and then gathers the money from the customers and they're supposed to eventually deliver the money to the actual sellers, the uh, suppliers. The problem, though, is that Timon and WeMap keeps the money for a period of time before sending the money to the sellers. And it's been reported that they have been keeping the money for 60 days, which is much longer than other e-commerce platforms and longer than physical offline uh, stores. Uh, but effectively, Timon and WeMap embezzled that money taking the money that they have been keeping for the sellers uh, and instead taking that money and using it for their own purposes. So it owes money to both customers and suppliers. Uh, The uh, refunds to the customers are being worked out, as I said, through uh, credit card companies and payment gateways. uh, Who uh, Payment gateways, as I said, uh, route payment between Internet portals like uh, WeMap and Timon to... uh, credit card companies so that uh, uh, they can make payments. Uh, but here, uh, because uh, they will be responsible for refunds, they may get stuck with losses 
if Timon and WeMap do not, uh, in the end, make payments. Mm. Uh, but it's unclear right now how much money is uh, owed to the sellers. Those uh, the losses on the uh, losses the sellers are not yet completely calculated yet. And as I said, the uh, uh, the upper uh, level for uh, the losses that are being talked about are reaching one trillion one. Uh, okay, of course, going forward, further investigations will only reveal who is really at fault. Uh, but it, it seems that attention is now also pivoting to Q10 CEO Ku Yongbei because Team One and WeMe Price are both owned by the Singapore-based e-commerce company. Uh, can you give us a detailed account of how the liquidity crisis all began and what went wrong? Okay, well, the Q10 Group, the uh, parent company of Timon and WeMap, instead of keeping the, uh, the uh, money allocated for payment in those accounts, the owners uh, seem to have used that money for their own purposes. Uh, we do not yet exactly know uh, what that purpose was, but the current speculation is that the money was used to expand the Q10 Group, uh, especially uh, specifically to purchase a U.S. marketplace portal site called Wish and possibly other portal sites inside and outside Korea. Uh, Q10 has operations in Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Singapore, uh, and with Wish, they also wanted to start an operation in the U.S., and they uh, have recently purchased a lot of marketplace portal sites in Korea, uh, into park shopping, uh, WeMap, and uh, Timon, uh, and AK Mall, uh, all within the last about three years. Um, now, why are they purchasing so many mm. uh, internet uh, portal sites? Uh, apparently, they wanted to list themselves in NASDAQ. And most of these companies, uh, especially the Korean companies, seem to be losing money. Uh, WeMap and Timon uh, were known to be in the red for years. Uh, the Q10 group also seems to be in the red. Uh, so the uh, way to get themselves uh, listed and perhaps uh, be able to attract investors in NASDAQ is to seem to be expanding very, very quickly. And that seems to be the strategy that they have taken. Now, the uh, chairman, Gu Yongbe, uh, was an uh, Internet entrepreneur in Korea. He started some Internet uh, shopping malls in Korea. And then when he sold them off, he agreed not to work in uh, Korea for a uh, fixed period of time. That's why he started the company in Singapore and started operations mm-hmm. in uh, Indonesia and Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, uh, the because uh, Q10 and uh, Minap and Timon uh, has uh, revealed to be in serious dire straits, uh, and basically using the customers and uh, money that technically belongs to customers and sellers uh, for their own purposes, uh, this is very much akin to embezzlement. And because this has come to light, uh, they seem to be giving up their plans to uh, list themselves in NASDAQ. Obviously, it's uh, even questionable right now whether the group is going to be viable. Uh, so uh, the uh, Q10 group, uh, is facing a major crisis. They may not survive, at least their operations in Korea will probably not survive at the very least. So, uh, of course, as a response, the Fair Trade Commission and the Financial Supervisory Service have launched inspections and investigations, respectively, also launching a special response team at the Korea Consumer Agency to facilitate collective dispute mediation. What is the expected trajectory from here? And will Timon and We Make Price consider undergoing corporate rehabilitation procedures? We, they've filed for it already. Okay, well, uh, filing for corporate rehabilitation acknowledges that they cannot pay back what they owe with their current assets. Mm-hmm. And it's been known that the uh, Q10, the parent company, uh, has been operating in the red for years. Uh, the uh, Timon and WeMap has also been operating in the year, uh, operating in the red for years. Uh-huh. Uh, now, uh, filing for corporate rehabilitation it may give breathing room for Timon and WeMap, but uh, for sellers and customers, it can be bad news. Uh, giving them uh, some breathing room means that uh, they can delay payments even further. 
Uh, so reportedly, the government uh, will put in 100 and, uh, 560 billion won to rescue the suppliers, many of whom are small and medium-sized companies who may go bankrupt if they do not make receive, uh, receive payments soon. Uh, and because the uh, problem for these uh, small companies are worsened because uh, Timon and Remap take so much time to uh, pay these sellers uh, for the uh, transactions that they made, as I said, up to 60 days, uh, that if they needed operating capital, they borrowed money from banks or financial institutions using the uh, promised payment as collateral. So if uh, the Timon and Remap uh, further delays their payments, they, uh, they are going to be not able to pay back uh, what they loan from the bank, and that's why there's uh, so many of them are in danger of uh, bankruptcy themselves. Mm. So uh, part of government support package will include extending the loans or have giving these uh, sellers access to uh, longer-term low-interest loans. Uh, but um, it's right now very questionable, in fact, unlikely, uh, that uh, these firms will be able to go through rehabilitation uh, since, first of all, both of these, uh, Timon and Remap, are effectively bankrupt. Uh, the parent company is effectively bankrupt. Its credibility and brand image now is in tatters. Mm. And even before then, uh, the uh uh, these, uh, both of these companies were far beyond, uh, behind other e-commerce uh, competitors such as Coupon, Neighbor, and 11th Street. Uh, the uh, sales volume were much less than most of these other com- uh, e-commerce competitors. And furthermore, very few e-commerce competitors are actually making money. Reportedly, only Coupon and Neighbor are in the red uh, in the black, excuse me. All the other competitors, even though they may be larger, are uh, working in the red. So uh, even if government assistance or even if rehabilitation is given, uh, it's not clear whether they'll be able to get back into the black because so many e-commerce companies are not doing well. Uh, and even on the very unlikely case that they do, uh, that means these companies, uh, Naver and TNAP, will be using uh, rehabilitation to get back on their feet, which means that other companies which are, uh, have not caused these type of problems uh, but are in the red, they may go out of business because of competition from VMAP and uh Mm. Timon. So uh, it's not entirely clear whether rehabilitation will be successful, but even before rehabilitation can start, they have to get agreement from their debt holders. Uh, And uh, it's not clear again uh, whether the uh, debt holders uh, will allow the companies to go through rehabilitation. They have the right to veto uh, whether the companies will go through rehabilitation. Uh, and then uh, there's a possibility, uh, perhaps, that the uh, partner companies, uh, the uh, fellow investors uh, uh, that invest in Chutan may put more money into uh, the operation. And some people are hoping for that right now. Personally, I am doubtful. Uh, the uh, Q10 partners, uh, Timon partners, uh Remap uh, partners, they include private equity firms like uh, Kravitz, Kohlberg, and Roberts, and Anchor Equity Partners. Uh, but they put their money in, uh, hoping to get money by uh, listing these companies in NASDAQ. Uh, that uh, hope seems to have fallen, and I'm not sure if they want to put any more money into this operation, which uh, right now maybe something like a bottomless well. Mm. So uh, there is a possibility that there will be rehabilitation, but again, it receives, uh, it needs agreement from its debt holders, two-thirds of its debt holders, and three-quarters of its collateral holders, and it's not entirely clear uh, whether they will believe that uh, they will ever have chance of getting any of their money back. So uh, mm. While they may have filed for uh, rehabilitation, they may have no choice but to just go into bankruptcy. 
Okay. And for our final question today, Professor Young, I'm wondering, with now benefit of hindsight, we're learning that there were perhaps red flags along the way. And perhaps if there is a systematic flaw that wasn't able to intervene earlier? Uh, it turns out, namely, the Financial Supervisory Service was aware of the two e-commerce platforms, capital and uh, solvency ratio issues from two years ago, but they failed to take proactive action due to inadequate supervisory measures. So then what efforts need to be made to prevent recurrence of v- something very similar? OK, well, there has been a, a lot of signs that the uh, 210 VMAP and uh, Timon was a very much tax for. Uh, when Q10 bought these co- uh, companies from their former owners who are now uh, minority partners, uh, they used a ca- uh, stock swap rather than buy, for, uh, buy stock with cash. Uh, that's usually used when uh, the purchaser of the stock does not have enough cash. And then, as I mentioned, uh, WeMap and Simon uh, took 60 days to meet their payments. Uh, which is longer than other e-commerce uh, companies and longer than even physical uh, offline uh, m- m- brick-and-mortar companies. Uh, and then, uh, at least since 2022, uh, the, it was known that the uh, uh, liabilities of these companies, the debt, uh, was larger than the amount of assets. So basically, these companies were broke, uh, and they signed... A, an agreement with the Financial Supervisory Service promising that they will improve their financial conditions and the government, the Financial Supervisory Service, was supposed to monitor their progress. And obviously something failed there. The uh, government has failed to monitor them as in the uh, MOU that they signed. The one problem that the uh, Financial Su- Supervisory Service is mentioning is that there are, or at least at the time of the signing, there were no laws applying to these e-commerce companies. Korean laws can be very literal. Uh, so uh, even though they have perhaps protection clauses uh, for uh, brick, brick and mortar companies, offline companies, uh, unless they specifically say that, uh, it applies to e-commerce companies, uh, you can uh, interpret the law as saying that it doesn't apply to uh, these e-commerce companies, even though they largely do same type of operation as the brick and mortar companies. Uh, so that has always been sort of a blind spot in Korean legal and regulatory systems. Sometimes you cannot uh, prudently regulate these companies because uh, there are uh, no applicable laws and regulations because you have to interpret Korean laws very uh, literally. Other times, because you have to interpret these laws and regulations very literally, uh, you have no legal basis, so you cannot introduce a new product or new industries uh, because uh, they are afraid that no laws, uh, there's no legal basis for introducing uh, these uh, goods or industries, even though they may be similar ones, uh, but not exactly the same. Uh, so this, again, this has always been sort of a blind spot uh, in the uh, Korean legal and regulatory system. Uh, now, one report uh, that came out yesterday said that during the last two years, the government spent three billion won trying to keep VMAP alive before this current problem came to light last week. Uh, so if you look back, uh, it might have been just better to let these firms go out of business two years ago rather than trying uh, to keep them alive. And that perhaps come up brings up another flaw in the system. Mm-hmm. We may be trying to keep too many firms alive uh, through heroic means rather than letting them go out of business and uh, trying to get new firms which may be more profitable uh, uh. coming to the market. All right, something we learned with hindsight. Thank you for addressing the blind spot there too, Professor Young. We appreciate your insights. We'll speak to you again next week. Thank you. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.